Sudhir Hazarizing, Black Spartacus, The Epic Life of Toussaint Louverture. Delve into the incredible life of Toussaint Louverture, the man who led the Haitian Revolution and became a symbol of black liberation. In Black Spartacus, The Epic Life of Toussaint Louverture, author Sudhir Hazarizing explores the tumultuous journey of a once enslaved man who rose to prominence as a military commander and political leader. Discover the challenges he faced while striving for freedom and civil rights for the people of Saint-Domingue, and witness how his legacy contributed to the establishment of the first black democracy in the New World, Haiti. This summary takes you through the key moments of his life, his personal charisma, strategic prowess, and dedicated fight for liberty. The Unstoppable Toussaint Around the 1790s, inspired by the French Revolution, enslaved and free black people in Saint-Domingue, now Haiti, began to push for their own freedom and civil rights. Amidst this, Toussaint, a former enslaved man, rose as a key figure in the rebellion and became instrumental in the fight for emancipation. Under his leadership and military brilliance, the rebels ultimately defeated the Spanish, British, and pro-slavery French forces to regain control. However, the fight for liberation was far from over. Toussaint was a middle-aged man by the early 1790s, residing in the Breda sugar plantation on Saint-Domingue. Meanwhile, in Europe, the French Revolution erupted, overthrowing the Bourbon dynasty and introducing values like liberty, equality, and fraternity. The Declaration of the Rights of Man in 1789 created a debate among Saint-Domingue's inhabitants about whether it should also grant rights to the mixed race and black population or even abolish slavery altogether. Ultimately, conservative white landowners prevailed, and discussions of rights and emancipation were prohibited. Nevertheless, the spark of liberty caught fire among the island's literate black population. They identified with the revolutionary ideas and knew that they deserved freedom and political participation. In August 1791, tensions reached their peak, and an insurrection of mixed race and black people began. They took over plantations, freeing enslaved workers and growing their militia. By November, over 100 plantations were liberated, and over 80,000 people were set free. Despite gaining power, the rebellion faced resistance from French forces. By late 1792, the French seemed to gain an upper hand, and the rebel leaders turned to the Spanish for help. Toussaint, now a prominent figure in the rebellion, negotiated a deal with the Spanish, gaining military aid and a promise to emancipate enslaved French people and grant them Spanish citizenship. Consequently, the tide turned in Toussaint's favor, and he became the most influential figure in the rebellion. As the prospect of victory grew, Toussaint became increasingly committed to abolishing slavery. This dedication created friction with other leaders like Jean-Francois and Georges Biasso and strained relations with Spain. By the end of 1793, the conflict had devolved into chaos, with additional British involvement attempting to capture the colony. In an audacious move, Toussaint reached out to Etienne Maynard de Lavos, the new French governor of Saint-Domingue. Lavos, an aristocrat, assured Toussaint that France was closer to ending slavery in their colonies. In May 1794, Toussaint broke ties with the Spanish and joined forces with the French. Under his alliance with the French, Toussaint's military and political prowess flourished. Although Lavos's French Republicans were in a weak position, Toussaint's exceptional tactics and deep knowledge of the island's geography allowed his forces to outweat the Spanish, the British, and pro-slavery French factions. Toussaint's legendary charisma and courage inspired his troops, who believed they were fighting for liberty and their rights. He was known to give impassioned speeches before leading his forces into battle. His extraordinary resilience fueled rumors that Vodou's spirits protected him. By 1798, Toussaint's unwavering efforts had helped to regain control of Saint-Domingue for the French Republicans. He had become one of the most powerful figures on the island, defeating the Spanish and British armies. However, the struggle for freedom had yet to reach its conclusion. Toussaint's Rebellion and Diplomacy Saint-Domingue faced significant turmoil following years of fighting, with decimated infrastructure and damaged plantations. 
Under Toussaint's leadership, the colony forged an economic partnership with the United States, strengthening Saint-Domingue and solidifying his political power. As the region began to stabilize, Toussaint turned his attention to the liberation of enslaved people in neighboring Santo Domingo, capturing the territory and enacting widespread reforms. However, his successes amplified European concerns, leading to the looming threat of invasion from Napoleon. In the midst of Saint Domingue's crises following years of conflict, Toussaint proved a capable and popular leader among the local population. Focused on rebuilding the island and maintaining his influence, he sought an alliance with the United States. By forming a beneficial trading relationship with President John Adams, both parties prospered from the exchange of sugar, coffee, and other resources. Despite the ongoing struggles, Toussaint's dedication remained unwavering, he worked tirelessly to manage military operations and oversee the civilian administration. His personal involvement in every aspect of the colony's function earned him widespread support, particularly from Saint Domingue's black residents. Embracing republican ideals, the people maintained a strong belief in democratic decision making, solidifying their freedoms after fighting for emancipation. Toussaint's ultimate vision was to achieve a society void of slavery and inequality, not only for his colony but the entire island of Hispaniola. This ambition led to confrontation with neighboring Santo Domingo, where slavery was still practiced under Spanish control. Despite French objections and their attempts to deter military actions, Toussaint forged ahead in liberating the eastern half of the island. The quick triumph over Spanish forces culminated in an emancipation decree for Santo Domingo's enslaved population and the promise of equal protection under the law, regardless of race. This unification spurred rapid change across Hispaniola, with Toussaint orchestrating a general assembly to draft and ratify a new constitution for the colony. His leadership as governor not only updated the agricultural, judicial, and financial systems, but explicitly banned slavery in all forms. While public celebrations marked the accomplishments and distribution of pocket-sized constitution copies, the success soon attracted unwanted attention. European powers grew suspicious of the flourishing, free black republic in the Caribbean, and fear of invasion spread among the people of Saint-Domingue. News of Toussaint's unyielding progress reached Paris, displeasing Napoleon, who disapproved of the leader's defiance and the controversial new constitution. Outraged by the invasion of Santo Domingo, Napoleon dispatched a force led by General Victoire Emmanuel Leclerc to depose Toussaint and restore slavery on the island. The arrival of this force demonstrated the imminent, growing threat Saint Domingue now faced from European powers seeking to reimpose their control. Defiant Revolutionary, Toussaint's Legacy In 1802, the French sent a powerful invasion force to Santo Domingo with the intention of crushing Toussaint's native army. Although the odds were against them, Toussaint strategically organized his forces in a war of resistance that slowed down the French advancement. In an unexpected turn of events, a peaceful truce was negotiated, but Toussaint was ultimately arrested by the French and sent to France as a prisoner. He died in his prison cell, but his legacy lived on, inspiring the people of Saint-Domingue to fight for their independence and establish Haiti as the first black democracy in the New World. On January 29, 1802, an invasion force led by Leclerc, consisting of over 25 massive vessels and several smaller warships, was sighted off the shore of Santo Domingo. The French commander intended to dominate the island with powerful weaponry and subdue Toussaint's native army before they could even counterattack. But Toussaint was prepared. He had amassed large quantities of weapons from America, stowed them away in secret locations across the island, and strategized a way to stall the French army by destroying coastal cities and staging resistance from the countryside. The French had expected a swift victory but were met with fierce opposition. Their efforts to gain support from local leaders by promising freedom and brotherhood were futile. Instead, the locals covertly sabotaged and spied on the French for Toussaint. From his hidden command in the mountains, Toussaint launched surprise attacks on the French forces, deftly transitioning back to his role as a military leader. By March 1802, his forces had reclaimed several key cities. As both sides reached a stalemate, Toussaint made overtures to Leclerc for a truce. 
Despite their conflicting goals, the Haitian resistance still held allegiance to France. An agreement was struck, the fighting would cease and the commanders would join forces in working towards a peaceful resolution. However, their truce was short-lived. In June 1802, under the pretext of a dinner invitation from General Jean-Baptiste Brunet, Toussaint was captured and deported to France on charges of sedition. Upon arrival, Toussaint was confined to a dreary cell in Fort de Joux where he lived in grim conditions. Despite his circumstances, he remained steadfast in his belief of liberty and equality for all, penning letters to Napoleon that reiterated his dedication to the republican ideals. He questioned whether his skin color impeded his bravery or honor and lamented the pervasive racism that persisted in French society. The harsh conditions of his imprisonment gradually took their toll on the aging revolutionary. By 1803, a severe cough and rapid weight loss hampered his health. In his cell, on April 7, Toussaint passed away and was buried hastily at the fort's chapel. Although his life had ended, the struggle for freedom he led continued to inspire others. Back in Saint-Domingue, the French gradually lost control as the locals revolted in response to Toussaint's capture and rumors of slavery's resurgence. Seizing the chance for change, Jean-Jacques de Saline, a comrade of Toussaint, declared the island's independence on January 1, 1804, founding the nation of Haiti. Toussaint's leadership and vision for a society rooted in equality and self-determination vastly impacted the Haitian Revolution and the birth of the first black democracy in the New World. While he did not live to witness Haiti's independent future, he knew it was inevitable. Before his departure to France, Toussaint uttered a final declaration, By striking me, you have cut the tree of black liberty in Saint-Domingue. But it will spring back up from its roots, for they are many and deep. His words and legacy continue to inspire generations in the pursuit of liberty and justice. Toussaint Louverture's life is a testament to the power of resilience, dedication, and the pursuit of freedom. He transcended his beginnings as an enslaved man on a sugar plantation and ultimately became a key figure in the Haitian Revolution. His actions, in the face of insurmountable challenges and complex political environments, led to the development of the first independent black nation, Haiti. Despite his tragic death in captivity, Toussaint's vision of a society built on equality and self-determination was achieved and paved the way for future struggles, for black liberation. As you bid farewell to the tale of this extraordinary icon, remember the deep roots of his dream and the powerful foundation he laid for lasting change.